Alright guys, pretty excited for today's video. This is a brand new cinema headset. This is the Guvis G3 Max. I bought it on Indiegogo recently for $869. It came with a nice carry case as part of the bundle and I wanted to showcase to you guys what are the benefits of this and how great this is. Essentially in a snapshot, this is an advanced home cinema headset that is 5K OLED and it comes with a little Android TV box that you connect via HDMI and the USB-C port on there. But we'll run through the design, set it up so you guys can see what I see and let's go ahead and see if this is worth buying. Okay, so in the whole package, you get this nice carry case. This was the only thing that I got in the box and there isn't actually a Guvis G3 Max box that comes with it that you had to unpack. It's just literally this was in the packaging that was shipped to me and everything was inside here. So you've got like a little pouch here to place some of the cables. So this is the little portable stream media player, quick reference guide to get you up and running with the Android TV, which also comes with a nice remote. A quick start guide to get you up and running fairly quickly and then a lens cleaning cloth to make sure you do clean this regularly after especially long periods of use now you have yourself a usb-c to usb-c cable a usb-c to usb-a cable hdmi to hdmi very short cable here this is a guvis video adapter it has a type c port there with a dc 5 volt input port right there and then the hdmi just on the other side to connect to the d4 media player and then you have this which is the d4 media player this is connected via the hdmi port there and you also have a usb-c input if you wanted to use this charged up which will allow you to use this for long periods of time because you can just use this off of the internal battery and that's the length of time that you'll be able to view your content on the headset itself with the android tv media player you get yourself a nice little remote control of course when you do have the headset on you will have to try to remember where the buttons are because you won't be able to see it through the headset so when you're holding this in your hands you obviously need to use the directional buttons the menu buttons volumes etc but it's pretty easy to use if you've used the remote like this many times then you don't actually need to look at it to navigate your way around it also has voice control as well, so you can set Google Assistant and open up commands like opening up certain apps like Netflix, etc. But you have some of the dedicated buttons of the most popular content streaming apps just there at the bottom. And let's take a closer look at the design of the headset itself. So this is a very nice design and what Guvis have done is they've focused purely on this iteration of this in my headsets on eyesight and comfortability. When I say eyesight, they also have low blue light and low fatigue built into the lenses as well so you can actually use this for long periods of times without having to worry a little bit about damaging your eyesight or anything like that and for those people that do wear glasses you also have the diopter just on the right hand side and the left hand side to adjust manually each eye separately which i think is very nice so you can go to plus two all the way down to minus seven and when you do twist this to adjust it to see if it's the correct vision for you then you'll see inside the screen as well the numbers pop up on the screen on the left and the right just so you can remember what adjustment you've made whilst you're doing this with the headset on this actually has this nice silicone blackout screen here just for your eyesight that sits around your face and this is actually detachable so you can pull this out and the reason you can take this off is they also sell another version of this which has more of a comfortable sponge around it if maybe you don't find this too comfortable to wear for long periods of time so you can actually very easily replace this so you can slot that back in and it's very quick and easy to do that. Some buttons on the top. This is actually a USB-C port for data transfer and not for charging. This doesn't have any inbuilt OS so make sure you don't just charge this up. There's no internal battery on this. This is purely a monitor that is connected via HDMI for external devices like the D4 media player. Volume controls there. You've got the brightness levels there, a 3D button as well. So in case you have a Blu-ray player which has 3D movies that you want to watch, then you can actually do that using this. And then along the bottom, you have these sliders. These are the eye adjusters. So you can actually move these to adjust the distance between your eyes. And that is very important as well because everyone has different eye vision and eye distances. And this will basically cover, you know, I would say more than 99.9% .9 of people. Now to connect, the headband which is also made for comfortability you have this nice little sponge right there on the top for your forehead and this actually has more silicone pads just at the top that sits on the top of your head and a stretchy band that you can adjust and this tilts up and down 
with the headband to place it where you feel like it's the most comfortable to keep on for long periods of time. And then this metal attachment here is actually quite strong so you can push this but when you first use it you open this up you have a slot right there you just put it in you hear the clip and it's in place and once it's in you can then move the headband up and down if you wanted to remove the headband at any time there's a little switch just in between the eyes there and the goggles if you hold that this will pop out like so very quick and easy and that's pretty much it so then when you're ready to connect it USB-C cable put it into the type C slot grab the HDMI adapter put that into this little HDMI port on the video adapter get the D4 media player connect the HDMI in there and then the other end of the type C you place into the USB-C port just at the bottom of the right hand side and it fits in quite comfortably there we go now you'll note there's a couple of speakers just there as well so one on each of the top corners and then one at the bottom as well so this will disperse sound and although the audio is not great there is a lot of noise leak with the audio so if you're going to be watching something with a lot of people around they will be able to hear everything you're listening to to combat that what I would recommend is if you put in your own headphones through the headphone jack there most likely this will work best and I think it's probably going to be quicker and easier to use with a wired set of headphones rather than trying to fiddle it around and set up through the Android TV with Bluetooth headsets because any other HDMI device you try to connect you will always have to go and pair it with Bluetooth headset first for it to then be heard from and viewed by these goggles. So that, keep that in mind and I'm going to be testing it out without any headphones so you guys can hear some of the noise leaks. So what I'm going to do now is just quickly turn this on by holding down the power button. Of course the D4 media player has some lights here to show you the battery life left inside. And if you wanted to watch something for longer periods of time, maybe you're on a flight and you're traveling, you can connect this via the USB-C port there and charge it up via an outlet. I'm going to be showcasing what I see inside but before I do that let's just show you a quick snapshot of what I can see through the phone and then I'll also have to show you via my HDMI capture card of how it looks on the screen so it's going to be quite difficult to show you exactly 100% what I see but ultimately the quality on this for me personally is amazing this is a thousand inch screen that I do see in here and this is 5k OLED like I mentioned in the beginning that essentially is 2.5k per lens on each side and you can adjust the resolutions but this can actually perform up to 4k at 60 hertz and then you can also do 1080p at 120 hertz so if you're looking to set this up with your gaming consoles then you can get a lot of fast paced gaming done with this headset if that's something you want to do so let's go ahead and just quickly see what it looks like through the lens of my phone now what I'm going to do is try and see if I can go in the lens make it a little bit clearer for you so you can see if I control it with the remote scrolling down this is how I will see Android TV inside the lenses but of course once I connect this to my HDMI capture card and play back it on the TV you will see it in larger screen but this is how it will look inside the lens and of course when I put it on that's something different and you guys will have to judge based on the quality that I explain how great this actually looks okay so just to let you know how I've set this up with my TV here I've got the video adapter connected to my Guvish G3 headset and you can see the blue light indicator is on there when you do set it up with a capture card you do need to add external power source so I've connected this via the outlet another type C port there I have the HDMI adapter from this coming from HDMI out on my Agato HD60X and the D4 media player is connected with another HDMI cable to the HDMI in and then the Type-C port on the Elgato capture card there goes directly into my MacBook. So I've opened this up with OBS Studio and I've got the video capture coming in full screen with my webcam just set up there connected just to the bottom right of the screen. So now I'm going to showcase everything that I'm seeing directly on the headset with my TV. Okay, so the first thing is you just need to tighten it up a little bit and face the headset towards you. So push it in in between the nose so everything seems clear. 
So I've got it on zero and zero for the diopter readings and everything is really clear for me. This is 1000 inches and it feels like I am at the cinema as well because it has complete blackout around the screen. So as you can see, I'm now navigating Android TV. So there's Netflix, YouTube, lots of things you can watch. And I really like that this is just another way of having like a home cinema projector, but just on a headset that you can just watch anywhere you want in any room. So let's go ahead and play a sample video, for example, on YouTube. And now I'm going to put the volume up to the max, which it is. And hopefully you can hear from the microphone attached to my shirt what the audio quality is like. The actual screen itself, the video quality that I'm seeing is amazing. Now, of course, you're just looking at a video capture of this, but this is exactly how I'm seeing it on the headset. It's just so vibrant, it's super sharp. And this is definitely a game changer, to be honest. And I was looking for a headset like this, which is just a simple cinematic monitor headset that you can connect to any source and just play back anything through. I think this is basically, you know, one of the best cinema headsets out there. And one thing I would mention is I don't want anyone to mistake this for a VR headset. This is not virtual reality. So when you move around your head, everything moves with you. Nothing stays static. It's you're just looking at basically a video playing through a very nice screen inside your little cinema headset. You can't immerse yourself in the environment. You don't see anything else. You can't look around and get like a 360 view of a particular reality. But nonetheless, just to watch videos, movies, TV shows, play some games, whatever you want, this actually does a really good job. And this resolution I think is you know, absolutely great. And if you feel like the screen is too big, you can actually hold down the up volume button and this will actually shrink it from a thousand inches, a little bit smaller, maybe around 800 inches, just to make it easier for you to just concentrate more towards the center of your viewport rather than looking left and right with your eyes. So for me, you know, this is a big win and I'm really enjoying using this and I have actually used this in the past few days. I've watched one of my TV shows on Amazon Prime with this and, you know, I can't really fault it. It's really good quality. Of course, the audio quality is not so great, but you can resolve that, get some really nice quality wired headphones, which are in-ear headphones and not particularly over-ear ones because there's no space to obviously put them. But I think for the majority of people, that would be absolutely fine to use. And even if you don't want to use headphones and you're just using this in your room by yourself and no one's around, then the speakers generally are good enough to just watch whatever you want to watch. Let's just check out the settings. Go to the device, display and screen resolution. And you can switch on the auto switch for the best resolution for whichever HDMI source you've connected it to. And this one is 4K 60 Hertz, as you can see there. But you also have the option to manually change this and go down to whichever one suits the type of content you want to play. But everything else is as you expect from Android TV. And it does have a licensed Netflix app, which is also quite rare in a lot of projectors that utilize Android TV. So that's also nice to see. And it also has Chromecast built in. So you can also wirelessly screen mirror to this from other Android or Google devices. And then once you're ready, you can just basically press the off button on the remote. And if you want to see your environment, you can just flip this up and then you'll be able just to talk to anyone, speak to anyone. And if you want to get back into the action, you can literally put it back down like this very easily. Okay, so now I'm going to be showcasing this with the PS5 connected to my Elgato HD60X. Let's go ahead and see how the gaming is and everything you see on the screen, I'm seeing in my headset. So I'm playing Crew 2 here. I love racing games and I've got it set to automatic refresh rate. Now one thing to note, this does not support variable refresh rate. So if you are looking to play those games whereby you need VRR in place to get the maximum potential from your gaming, 
this headset won't be it but it, for now it's really smooth and I can just play everything absolutely perfectly and there's no lag which is one of the most important parts of when you do play fast paced gaming whether that's first person shooters, racing games or whatever it may be now of course one thing to also mention is that as you move your head the screen moves with you so this is where you have to try and really stay as still as possible so that it doesn't interfere with your gaming for most part when you're just doing this on a TV you're so used to moving your head anywhere you want and the TV staying in the same position this is where you have to get used to having a headset if you've never used this before the slightest movement and everything kind of moves with you and it shakes so you can't really tilt your head you can't go up and down with your head left and right it just kind of makes it a little bit harder to concentrate on whatever you're watching but if you do get used to that then this is actually a really great way to have like a very large screen to play your games and personally I think this is really great for next gen gaming and that's going to be the future as well I know when there's a lot more headsets coming onto the market they're going to take gaming as one of the core focuses for headsets as well not just watching movies so as you can see from here I'm pretty impressed overall okay so hopefully that gave you an idea of the capabilities of this so here's my final thoughts there's a lot of good things I like about this this is a very great quality 5k OLED lens to watch anything at home as like your own portable cinema I really like the fact that you can just connect any HDMI source with it and you don't need to charge this or anything like that this is going to be very convenient and very portable, especially if you do like to travel a lot. And if you go on holiday, you can use this on a plane, connect your D4 media player, watch Android TV. I'm sure there must be some way to also connect a external USB hard drive to play content directly without having the need for Wi-Fi. Although I haven't found that out yet, but of course, there's plenty of different options of what you can connect this to and to really enjoy your content offline as well. Now, one thing I do have to mention is when they do mention this is lightweight and super comfortable, it weighs only 300 grams. And I do agree that this is quite lightweight. I feel like wearing this for just about half an hour, like I was doing now as kind of testing for this video, it wasn't as comfortable as they kind of market it to be. I still feel like there's quite a significant weight just sitting on your forehead. One thing I do like about it is when you do have this on, when you do flip it, out like this you actually are able to just pause the video and just go on standby essentially and then when you flip it back down it continues playing by where you left off so that's quite convenient as well but by no means this is so light enough that you can have this on for three four five hours for example you will get tired wearing this maybe that's something you might want to look into replacing the little mask around your eyes and getting the sponge one which they say is a lot more comfortable than the silicone one but again, that's something that if you want to try, then you can. But for me personally, having this for no more than like two hours, I think should be absolutely fine. But having the low blue light feature and making sure this gives you low fatigue, this is very important when you are wearing something like goggles or cinema headsets, virtual reality headsets, anything like that in this market space. So I'm actually really happy that they have included that and it's something that I do like in this headset. One thing I do also mention, which is probably one of the cons of this, is the fact that this is static and it's not virtual reality, it's not augmented reality, whereby you can just look around. Imagine you've always been watching TV on your sofa from a distance. Of course, the TV is not moving. You have the flexibility to move your head, speak to someone in the room. Maybe if you're just getting a bit tired, you're just doing head stretches, moving it side to side. If you do that with this, everything moves with you. And it kind of, if you're not used to that, experience it makes you a little bit dizzy and it kind of replicates like when you're on a boat that's on choppy waves for example and you get that seasickness that sea motion kind of movement it feels a little bit like that whereby you have to force yourself just to really stay still and kind of robotic where you don't need to move whatsoever just to have a really good viewing experience that's where you just need to maybe consider if this might be right for you and of course, this is referred to as a cinematic headset, like a home cinema headset. I see what it looks like when you go to a cinema. It kind of resembles that. But the fact that 
if you go to a cinema and the entire cinema screen is shaking left to right, it kind of makes it hard to concentrate. That's where this is a little bit on the downside, where I feel like when you do have VR headsets where everything does stay static and you can move around your head without anything else moving with you, that might be a little bit better just from that motion sickness kind of feeling. But apart from that, for $869, what they've included in the package, what you get with it, the capabilities of it, the quality on the video in this, which of course I can't explain other than a screen recording and just showcasing on my phone through the lens, is actually very, very good. And I think this is very good value for money. So I do recommend, check out the link in the description if you wanna read out the full specifications, all of the technical specs around the contrast ratios, everything like that then check that out and also have a look at the latest pricing information, especially when this goes into public release rather than on crowdfunding. And if you have any other questions about the capabilities of this, as always, drop a comment down below. Make sure to like this video and make sure to subscribe if you wanna check out all the latest and trending gadgets on this channel. So hopefully you don't miss any of those ones and I'll catch you at the next one. Take care.